Thank you, Johnny. I'm here with Mike Maddox. A uh, man has done a fantastic, tremendous job for this ball club. Uh, well liked by everybody, and obviously has a pretty good idea of, of pitching as this ball club has pitched well all year long and, and has a little different uh, approach. Uh, no question about it. Uh, good to see you, brother. Good to see you, Rick. Uh, yes, sir. Um, let's talk about Lucas Giolito. He's starting today. Uh, he's had his starts up here struggle a little bit with his command. Uh, but what are we looking to see from Giolito and just a little maybe rundown on what your thoughts are about this young man? Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking really forward to seeing Lucas. When he first came up, he didn't know what to expect being in the big leagues. And his first game, you know, unfortunately was cut short by rain. And he comes back and gets to face the same team again. It didn't go so well for him. And then he had a third start. And it didn't go so well for him. But each time that we sent him back down, he prospered. And he learned what he had to do. And he knows what he has to do. And he's taken his uh, bullpens in between those starts and applied them to those those starts in AAA. So let, let's let's remember this, too, that when he came up, he came up in AA. He hadn't pitched any AAA ball yet. Right, right. So he went back down to AAA. He had to learn that real quick. And he learned it quick. He's thrown uh, two really good ball games this past two outings. So we're looking forward to seeing him today, uh, see if he is able to apply what he's been doing. Man, he's impressive. I sat behind home plate the first night, and uh, he hit 98, and, and he pitched around 94 that night, 95 maybe. But his hook was unbelievable. He just didn't throw it for strikes as much. Uh, but he looked really good against that ball club until the rain came. The next outing, uh, couldn't get the ball over. So we talk about him growing and prospering. Uh, what mainly did you have him working on down there? Well, really commanding the fastball, you know, using the strike zone. We throw strikes early, they have to swing at that big curveball later on. So if he can land that thing early in the count, they have to honor it. You know, right. uh, before when they see that rotation and they just take automatically because he hadn't established it for strike, well, leaves him kind of a one-man pitcher, you know, and uh, it's hard to pitch with just one pitch. So oh, yeah. the ability to land that thing, that curveball, and then he's really taken to the changeup, and the changeup has really given him a new look, and uh, he understands the value of the changeup, and he has really learned in his short term in the big leagues uh, the high fastball, how effective that is. So great aptitude. He wants to learn. That's for darn sure. I think he uh, got humbled a little bit, which is a good thing. We all need that. Yeah. And he he took it he took it to heart and said, I need to get better, and he's done that. Let's talk about our rotation. We started the season, uh, Scherzer, Strauss, Roark, Ross, and, and uh, Geo. And there were not only publications, but people that really understand the game had um, us and the Mets and the Cubs having the best rotation in all of baseball. Uh, we got off to a great start, and Geo started struggling a little bit. Uh, you know, but uh, he found it. I talked to him a little while early. He says he feels great. We lost Ross for a while, uh, but we brought up some young kids, and they, they've been impressive at times. Lopez, a couple of great outings. Uh, where do you see our starting rotation right now? And, um, and when you came into spring training, how excited were you? And did you know that we had not just the three arms at the top, uh, but guys that could get the job done? I was really excited. You know, you see on paper, look at those bubblegum cards, and you see what Max has done. You see what Straz has done. You know what Tanner can do. And that was kind of our dark horse, you know. A lot of people in the industry understand what Tanner can do and what he has done. And Gio, you look at his bubblegum card. He's a former 20-game winner. He's always got good stuff. And how do we apply that? Then we had Joe Ross. And, and Joe was a young guy, but good arm, good aptitude. Um, no fear out there. Really took the at-bats to him, explosive fastball. And everything kind of came together. Those five out there every five games, that was pretty good. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think it kind of showed the depth in the organization, though. When we lost Joe, we were able to go down there and we grabbed Lucas. And then we, um, we got uh, Ronaldo Lopez. And Lopez has really done well. So he, he fit in well. So, you know, um, losing Joe hurt. But I also think it kind of helped in the long run because it, it lets us take a look at what else we have. And we really like what we have in uh, Lopez. He's going to be a good pitcher for, for a while. Go and A.J., A.J.'s coming. A.J. has come up and been a blessing, man. Um, you know, he's shown two really good quality games for us. The way I look at it, you know, the two teams that he's faced, they're, they're not shy to swing the oh bat and hit God. the ball and score runs. And, you know, that's why, um, you know, Baltimore is where they are with, our, you know, leading the league in homers and, you know, scoring runs, things like that. And then Colorado, they, you know, they, they're built to hit, you know, and then, he, he's been able to hold two good offensive teams down, so he's been a blessing for us. 
Joe Ross, starting rehab today. Yes. Kind of a timeline and what y'all's expectations are. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time with the rehab games. So uh, Joe's going to pitch inning today. He'll take two days down. He'll throw two innings on Wednesday. And then the last game of the season for Syracuse is Monday. So he'll start that game. We'll try to get him up to three innings, maybe four. Try to stretch him out as quick as we can in the shortest time as we have available. Do you think we'll see him back up here this year? We definitely will. Will he be stretched out to start? You know, at that point, unless we concoct something down in Arizona where we can put together a sim game or something right, where we can right. stretch him out. So there are options out there. What are our needs here? You know, do we go to a piggyback system or how are we going to do it? That's something we have to talk about.